What's up, YouTube? Um, I wanted to do a quick update before I go on vacation for five days. Uh, getting ready to go to Puerto Rico, and uh, I see a lot of people asking a lot of questions on forums and YouTube channels and things like that about what do I do if I'm going on vacation and I got a reef tank. Well, it's pretty simple for the most part. As long as you're not leaving for like two, three weeks at a time or whatever, you don't really need somebody to come every single day. And, uh, you know, your, feed don't, your fish don't need to feed every single day. Um, just to go over a quick thing of what I'm going to do, I'll give you a rundown on my equipment. I've got two LED lights that are on timers down around the side there. So, one, I don't need to worry about somebody turning my lights on and off. Um, two... I've got, alright, i got my sump down here, but it's all pretty simple. Um, what I did was empty the skimmer cup. My refugium light's going to stay off. It's not going to hurt anything for five days. There's plenty of copepods and stuff like that that are going to flow back up and help feed the tank. Um, also, I did a 10% water change tonight, and I'm leaving tomorrow early, early in the morning at like 3 a.m. Um... So what I did was I, I did a big water change. I cleaned the front glass, but I left the sides and the back dirty with a little bit of uh, brown and green algae. So they got something to graze on while I'm gone. And what I'm going to do is I gave a trusted friend a key to the house. And I told them they don't need to come over every day. Like I said, I'm leaving pretty much tonight. I'm leaving at 3 a.m. Um, and then so I'm going to skip Friday. She's going to come over on Saturday. And I told her give them a small pinch of food. And honestly, I wasn't even worried about them feeding. Uh, these fish would be perfectly fine for five days. Some people say that that's neglect, but it's just not the case. They can go a long time. they got little stomachs, and there's plenty of stuff to graze on. But what I was mainly worried about is topping off my sump. So what I did was I, well, there was already a black line right. Let's see if I can get down here. It's kind of dark, but uh, there's a black line right there. And I filled her up a fresh bucket of roadie water right here and a pitcher and I just told her you know every other day she's gonna come over she'll be here Saturday and Monday and then I'll be back on Wednesday so every other day she's gonna come and top off the water I told her just give them a small pinch of food don't overdo it if they look hungry they always look hungry you know um, and she's not a reefer or anything like that but it's as simple as that small pinch of food and the main concern is just making sure that the water gets topped off uh, me living in Florida a lot of people's main concern is their heater exploding while they're gone, and I don't have an apex or anything like that to notify me if anything goes wrong. But uh, the tank's been running strong for a year. I got no worries. And what I did was I unplugged my heater because that's about the only thing that I don't trust in the tank. But um, it's staying pretty well around 77 to 81 degrees in my house without the air conditioner running. So what I'm going to do is set my AC to 81, that way if it does get super hot outside, which I doubt it's going to this time of year, um, the tank, no matter what, won't get any hotter than 81 degrees. And it's definitely not going to get any cooler than 77 because I've been leaving the AC off at night with the windows open, and that's around the temperature that we've been going. So, uh, yeah, just for uh, a little bit of reassurance for the people that are, that are real scared to go on vacation and stuff like that and leave their tank and think that, you know, you hear these big crazy stories of tank crashes and things like that I am not at all worried I'm probably gonna come home to uh, you know some brown algae on the front glass and that's gonna be about the worst of it um, my macro algae might go a little out of control since I don't have that light on a timer I'm just gonna leave it off I would rather have it off than leave it running straight for five days so I think that's my main concern just um, yeah it'll just be a little bit of algae I'll come back do a maybe a 20 percent water change um, maybe give them a little power feed before I do that since they're, you know, they'll, they'll definitely be hungry, but they won't be starving or anything like that. There's plenty of stuff for the fish to eat. Um, so yeah, I uh, may as well get into a quick update since I, I don't think I've posted in about a month now, but, um, there's a couple of new corals, but basically everything's about the same. Um, I've got that new leather in the front. Boy, it looks bright, bright white on the camera, but, uh. It's a little washy. I'm just on the phone right now, but yeah, I got that new leather. It was just a tiny little cutting about maybe two and a half, three weeks ago. I think I got that off of a friend and uh, it's just starting to explode. I may actually have to move it uh, up in the in the foreground, you know, in the background with uh, the Kenya trees and stuff because I got a feeling it's just going to take over the whole center of that tank and 
that's not really what I want, but it's a good spot for now just for me to kind of test the waters. I put it I put it down below when I first got it. It stayed kind of small, so I moved it up to mid-level, and it seems to be doing great there. So if it gets too much bigger, it'll probably have to go up in one of the corners just so it doesn't overwhelm you know, the aesthetic of the tank that I'm going for. Uh, the Duncans are doing excellent. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to get them on camera, but uh, see if I can focus in here. There's a brand new head coming in right there, and what you can't see behind it, uh, when it closes up for the nighttime, I can actually see four more heads coming off of this side and one more head coming off of that side. So that thing is just doing absolutely amazing. Um, this small encrusting coral right here, if anybody can give me a name on that, I know it, it's not focusing in the best, but uh, I'm not exactly sure what it was, but the same person that gave me the leather gave me that, and there was only maybe two small heads or whatever those yellow polyps are. There was about two of them left on a little tiny piece of seashell, and they said it wasn't doing great in their tank. I put it in here, and as you can see, it's encrusting down this rock now, and it's actually starting to make its way up that next rock, so pretty excited about that. Um, I think that's going to look really cool when it all, when it all fills in. Um, the mushrooms are definitely doing good. I would like to have them lower, but they just don't seem to be to do that great when they're lower. I put this one down here for a test, and... It used to be just about that big around, and now it's it just stays pretty shrunken down. So I'm going to have to find a new spot for that one. Um, actually, while I was cleaning the tank, I that was a three-headed candy cane, and I accidentally broke it. So one's still up there on the original frag, and I put these two down here on just another piece of live rock rubble. And uh, actually, I think breaking it actually helped it, because these are now twice the size of what they were when it was still connected to that one so I'm hoping that they'll produce some new heads here pretty soon too um, I think that's really all that's new in here I'll just give you a quick overall shot of the tank when I get back I'll do a better update but uh, yeah like I said going away to Puerto Rico for five days uh, not worried at all about the tank I think it's gonna be just fine um, I got a few more updates for you I got a small like one of those I don't know, it's maybe 80, 100 gallon uh, garden ponds, and I put that in the backyard, so I'm going to have some freshwater fish going on here pretty soon, too, and I'll have to uh, videotape all of that for you guys, but as of right now, I need, you know, the plants need to grow out and stuff. It's really not much to look at at the moment. I just put it in maybe a week ago, so I figure by the time I get back, it'll be ready for a couple of fish, and... Um, I do want to do a large fish only tank here pretty soon too because this guy love him to death but he has now murdered two of my blue green chromises he is terrorizing all of my zoanthids that's why uh, I mean there's still plenty there as you can see but he just every time I put a new frag in there I start to you know that's when I really notice it because it'll only be two or three polyps and then all of a sudden it'll be two and then one and then it's gone so He's the only culprit that I can really think of just because he screws with every other thing in the tank. So definitely going to start a fish only tank. I do want to keep him. He's a great fish. He eats out of my hands and everything, but he just, he's not well in this tank. So yeah, expect about, I would say at least a 125, maybe a 220 uh, Fowler tank coming down the line here probably in the next month. I really need to get him out of there before he terrorizes any more of my corals. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the update. I uh, just wanted to, for the, you know, for the few subscribers that I do have, if any of you guys were worried about vacation, I will do a follow-up video when I get back on next Wednesday and uh, show you that everything's just fine. I'll probably do a before video and show you, you know what I mean, because obviously I'm going to clean the tank as soon as I get back, but uh, yeah, I'll do a before and after video and just show you that it's really not all that bad. Nothing to really worry about. So, yeah. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I will get back at you probably next week sometime. Later.